Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My dear students and audience, in this video we will talk about concept of repeatability in animal breeding. So what are repeatable traits? Repeated traits are the traits for which individuals commonly have more than one performance record. For instance, number of services per conception in dairy cows, egg weight in poultry birds, and staple length in sheep. So we can record the same trait for a number of times during the lifetime of an animal. So repeated records are basically repeated phenotypic values for the same trait. Now, what is repeatability? It is a measure of strength of relationship between repeated records for a trait in a population. Alternatively, it is a measure of correlation between repeated records for a trait in a population. So what would be the correlation between repeated records of the same trait in a population that would be basically repeatability? It is denoted by R square. Typically, we denote R square for correlation and repeatability values for number of services per conception in dairy cows is very low. It is 0.15. Egg weight in poultry has a high repeatability. It's 0.9. And staple length in sheep has high heritability. It is 0.6. Now, how we uh, would interpret repeatability values? Its range is ideally uh, from minus one to plus one, although we hardly get any negative value. A repeatability value near one indicate that trait is extremely repeatable. A repeatability near zero indicate trait is hardly repeatable at all. Traits with repeatability values below 2.2 are lowly repeatable with repeatability values between 0.2 and 0.4 are moderately repeatable, and traits with repeatability values above 0.4 are highly repeatable traits. So from this number crunching, we can figure out whether this trait is going to repeat its performance or not. Now the question is, how can we estimate repeatability? So it's not very different from that of heritability. Repeatability value of a trait can be estimated on the patterns of heritability. Once repeated records are available on a single animal, a permanent environmental variance comes into play, sigma scale EP, and is estimated besides additive genetic variance and phenotypic variance. So one more component, variance component we need to add, which is permanent environmental variance. Let's have a look at what it means. For example, we have a typical equation, phenotypic variation is equal to genetic variation plus environmental variation plus G into E interaction. So suppose we assume P is equal to G plus E plus G E, and let's assume G into E does not exist or it's negligible, or we assume it's zero, so our equation becomes P is equal to G plus E. Now genetic variance can be further subdivided into additive genetic variance, dominance, and epistatic variance. So G is equal to A plus D plus I, Assuming dominance and epistasis do not transfer to next generation, so they are singled out or zeroed out, so G becomes equal to E. Now our equation one becomes P is equal to e, A plus E. Let's 
Further partition E into E is environment and ET is temporary environment and EP is permanent environment. So temporary environment is herd year season of a cow, of calving, of birth and permanent environment is like uh, uh, a thing which is permanently attached to the animal's uh, uh, life. For example, a broken teeth, a uh, chronic disorder, etc etc so suppose we call it now p is equal to a plus et plus e and we take variance of everything variance of p variance of a variance of et and variance of ep so sigma square p becomes equal to sigma square a plus sigma square et plus sigma square ep and here comes repeatability it is R square, it is equal to sig additive genetic variance, sigma square A plus sigma square EP. It is variance of uh, permanent environment and divided by sigma square P. So these two are basically in brackets. We add these two variances and then we divide it by sigma p. So this becomes repeatability. We just need to add a, a permanent environmental variance in additive genetic variance and then divide it that their sum by sigma square p. It becomes repeatability of a trait in a population. Sigma square a is additive genetic variance of a trait in a population. Sigma square ep is permanent environmental variance of a trait in a population. And again, sigma square p is phenotypic variance of a trait in a population. So to conclude, repeatability of a trait in a population is important parameters. One trait under investigation is repeatable. It is the ratio of additive genetic variance and permanent environmental variance to phenotypic variance. And it can be used for making a culling decision of the repeatable trait based on first record if repeatability is very high. So, for example, a cow took four uh, services for its first breeding and if this is very highly repeatable trait, then we can simply call that cow based on its first record because we know that she is going to repeat its performance again and again and we can make a culling decision very safely. So, uh, similarly, if milk production is repeatable trait, we can uh, cull the cows based on milk production of first calving, uh, milk production during first uh, lactation. Uh, so we will not spend our resources on that animal and we can simply cull that uh, animal. So repeatability is a useful trait and uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any question, you can ask the, this question in the comments.